show. Uh, we got the first slide. The first line says 200 penny worth of bread would not be sufficient. Remember last week we looked at uh, John chapter 6 and we looked at who Jesus was and how he could do something miraculous out of something every day. Today we're going to look at the character Philip. Philip is one of the disciples and this was Philip's response to Jesus saying, feed the people. Jesus had just seen a need and he'd asked his disciples to meet that need. And as we look around our streets of Acock screen today, we see a need. Before service uh, started uh, today, uh, three people came in just wanting me to pray with them. And last night I was, I smiled at one of the stories that the, the, the preacher gave. David Wilkerson, who was a, who was a tremendous man, uh, who was a uh, passed away a few years ago, founded the Teen Challenge movement. And uh, this man was given the task of getting him from the vestry to the stage to minister a sermon. And every three or four paces, somebody would stop him and say, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And this man was this this man who had been given this task of moving him to the platform was getting stressed out. And then he turned to David and said, Mr. Wilkerson, I have to get you onto the platform to minister the word. David stopped in his tracks and said, Brother. What I do on the platform is preaching. But outside of the platform is ministry. And Jesus was here asking this question of his disciples, wanting to see just how they were going to deal with these 5,000 men. And Philip's response was 200 penny worth of bread would not be sufficient. What do you know about Philip? For our opinion of him should not be formed on these few words. Philip was a disciple who brought Nathaniel to Jesus to be a disciple. John chapter 1 verse 46 says this, And the Samuel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said unto him, Come and see. Some of you this morning uh, have been invited to come and see a believer's baptism. Some of you have never seen a baptism before. And it'll be the first time. But unless somebody gives you an invitation, you wouldn't get to see. But Philip invited Nathaniel to come and see Jesus. It was Philip who asked of Jesus in John 14, verse 8, show us the Father and that will suffice us. You know, we use that passage of scripture at funerals, don't we? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, 
I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. But right at the end, Philip says, show me the Father, but it suffices him. It was also Philip who came and said to the Greeks in John chapter 12, verse 20 to 22, and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same came therefore to Philip, which was at Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. What? Come and see. We would see Jesus. He had some very interesting little phrases. This Philip was not the Philip, the evangelist, who baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, but he was nevertheless a man that was used by God. Our thoughts come back to just what he said to Jesus when he was uh, tested by him. And Jesus asked of that question, feed. Testing is not temptation. As I said in the Bible class on Tuesday, temptation pulls down and entangles you. But testing lifts you up and sets you free. Jesus knew before he asked the question what response he would get from Philip. And he knew what was going to do in the midst of the great multitude. God knew what his son was going to do. Please don't think that there is any word that came out of the mouth of the Saviour that was idle. Every word that came out of the word of Jesus was made there to bring life and to set people free. What was the need in this situation? Simple. The answer was food. The people would get their physical food, but the disciples would get a valuable lesson at the hands of a master of what can happen when the creative words of the master are mixed with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Last week I told you of my feeding of the church with the five loaves and the two fishes pales into insignificance when we look at what Jesus did with five loaves and two fishes. When the Holy Spirit is behind it, it is multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. Philip's eyes were on the natural, but Jesus were on the supernatural. Often our spiritual life can be limited by our physical sight. Friends, there's nothing wrong with counting the cost. Luke chapter 14, this is Jesus talking, verse 28 to 35, and we just want to read. But which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth down first and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to finish it, lest happen after he had laid the foundation and is set not able to finish it? All that behold it begin to mock him, saying, this man built, began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to war 
against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassador to desire conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good. But if the salt hath lost its savour, wherein shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Faith is not an absence of sense, but faith is the ability to trust when you cannot see. Hebrews 1, 11 and verse 1 says this, and we know this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When Jesus asked Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus, seeing both the physical and the spiritual, knew that Philip could not either meet either. But he could. Jesus was able to minister to the spirit and to the physical. For the physical and spiritual hunger that the Lord saw in each of these 5,000 men, he knew he was able to satisfy. A little further on in John 6, Verse 48, it says that Jesus says that I am the bread of life. We are reminded that Jesus is the bread of life. Yes, the 5,000 men were following him for the miracles and for the physical bread. But his 12 chosen, hand-picked men were following him for so much more. It was Peter that said just a little later in that same chapter, Lord, to whom can we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. In John chapter 6 and verse 68. Philip answered, was an indication of where he was. What he understood, he was still learning. Would he make a statement like this? Maybe. But Jesus was there to instruct him and to guide him. I remember one church board who would not have a treasurer as a deacon. He might think, well, surely deacons, one is supposed to be a treasurer and one is supposed to be a secretary. Not necessarily. But this particular church did not want the treasurer to be a deacon. Because if the minister and the deacons felt by the Spirit that they should go in a certain direction, a treasurer who could see the money might vote against the cause. When faith says build, the treasurer might say, we have no money. God is greater than our pockets, our bank balance, and our faith. But God 
with the help of the Holy Spirit, is willing to teach you how to trust the words of the Master. Don't think that Philip was a bad disciple. Philip, having looked at the natural resources, was open to see what the supernatural Saviour could do. Today is a supernatural event. What we are seeing today is an outward, natural outward showing of something that happened <coughs> within the lives of these two candidates. I wasn't there at either one when Jesus came into their lives and took away their sins. You may not have been either. But today, we're here to acknowledge that Jesus did come and take away their sins. They're responding by allowing Jesus into their heart. Asking him to take away their sins is what they've done. For we realize that John 3.34 says that we're all born in sin and we're shaken in iniquity. Romans 3.23 says that we're all sinners and we've come short of that which God expected if we are sinners, then we need a Savior. Philippians 3 verse 20, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. If we've committed sin, we need the same. Jesus is that person. This act of admitting the need of a Savior and asking Christ into our hearts is when He cleanses us from our sin. You know something? What we're going to see today is one of the greatest miracles that we'll ever see. Some people want to see the miracles of the lame walking, and the blind being able to see, and they are wonderful. But you know something? Seeing the lives of individuals changed by Jesus is a tremendous miracle. Last night, as I say, we were in a building with uh, hundreds of lives that have been transformed by Christ. You might have been to churches and been to what they call a baptismal a child's baptism. The only baptism that we find in the Bible is when somebody is totally immersed. And in that we are saying that we are dead to self and as we come up, we are alive in Christ Jesus. That's what we are going to celebrate here this morning. And these two Candidates are going through. They've already told you how much they love the Lord Jesus and how they're going to follow Jesus all the rest of their days. They're not perfect and they never will be until they meet their Savior face to face. And then, and only then, will that be 
Please don't think that I have to wait till I'm perfect to be baptized. The only stipulation for water baptism is that you believe and have asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior. It's Him that changes.